how can a glider climb higher into the sky without an engine? Well, here's two flights showing how you can catch two very different types of lift that Mother Nature gives out for free. Before learning to fly in hard mode, he's gliding on what you might call easier mode, using thermal lift. A mild winter day, no wind and blue skies. Sunlight blankets the Australian countryside, heating up the ground which then heats up the air just above the ground. Soon columns of hot air rise up like steam coming off a cup of tea. You strap in. Do your safety checks with the ground crew. Canopy locks. Canopy closed and locked. Air brakes closed and locked. Then get launched behind a tow plane. You get pulled up about 2,000 feet into the sky until you feel some turbulence as your glider gets sucked up into one of these columns of rising air called thermals. You then release from the tow plane and climb all by yourself. This little DG303 really need to put it on its side. Stick in these little winter thermals. Ooh, I'm going up, but I just have to be turning. Rolled at about 45 degrees to stay in it. Probably only about 100 metres wide. The little flight computer in the cockpit also starts beeping, telling you you're going up. Soon other glider pilots spot you and they fly over to join the thermal. Golf Sierra Tango, I'm coming up underneath you, behind you in Delta Golf Alpha. You chase each other around and around, going thousands of feet higher until the lift becomes weaker. Then you zoom off towards the horizon in search of the next thermal. Soaring like a couple big eagles in the sky. How good's gliding? Next, here is gliding on hard mode, catching a whole different type of lift, the wave. As strong winter winds smash into a mountain range, the air gets pushed up into the sky, forming waves just like in the ocean. It's usually a freezing and wild morning as you launch into the air, but this time you need to get towed up high enough just to reach the wave of lift. Finally, you start to feel the smooth lift all around your glider. Now you're surfing the face of a giant sky wave. In Australia, you need to start using your oxygen system above 10,000 feet. Yes, the glider cockpit is as cramped as it looks. You've got an oxygen system, water, snacks, your phone, gloves, and after hours in the air, nature calls. With a parachute and harness restricting your movement, you have to be really careful not to bump the controls, move the glider and spill the bottle. Many pilots had seen the weather forecast look great for wave flying, so there was plenty of company in the sky. That alarm is the collision avoidance sensor. Good to hear it is functioning well. I was following Rick and Fitz. They're some of Australia's best wave pilots. They were also flying more high performance gliders, so I was struggling to keep up as they pulled away from me. So I headed towards Jindabyne and the ski fields, but as I punched south, the rising air kept turning into sinking air. I tried a few different lines in the sky, but each time I'd push about 10 kilometers south, I'd lose a couple thousand feet and come scampering back to the safety of where I knew I could find good wave lift. After two and a half hours though, I needed to land and share this rented Canberra Gliding Club aircraft with other pilots. It did not take long to throw away all my hard earned height as I circled and rolled around in the sinking air. Uh, when you're doing those kind of 60 degree turns, you're maintaining about 2G constantly. Uh, yeah, gets tiring. Like any wave day with strong winds, you perform a landing circuit with more height to be sure you can glide back to the runway. Then you touch down with extra speed and plenty of care. 
Sadly, I was on the ground, but the wave lift was massively improving. It reached 10 knots of lift. That means gliders were going up at about 1,000 feet per minute. Rick was at 22,000 feet above Jindabyne, and Fitz was racing along, hitting 250 kilometers per hour. He zoomed south about 80 kilometers into the state of Victoria, came back, turned around, and did it again, covering a remarkable 1,100 kilometers for the day. A massive day of gliding above the Australian high country. Subscribe for other gliding adventures.